everybody and welcome on back to Build on Earth Web. Today is episode number six of our Castle Let's Build series. We've been working on this fantasy castle over here, which has just been so much fun. You can see some dancing ender crystals out here in the front floating up here waiting to be detonated. Hopefully not again, though. We've had too many deaths to these guys so far. Uh, everything else has been pretty much created by hand over the last four or five episodes which has been super fun we got our gatehouse gatehouse up here last episode we came in and tried to detail this area out make it just look a little bit more interesting and make it look a lot better than everything else was previously however we got this little area in here started up ready to go and at the end of last episode i was going through our comments that we people have been leaving me which has just been insane there's been so much support for this so many ideas being thrown around and it was just awesome then there's one that I picked out for our comment or question of the day for last episode from good old Stuart. Stuart said that we should go ahead and create some awesome little sea cliffs over here with an inner area that's filled with water so that our water focused mages can do some practice and train their elementals and things like that and kind of do it more protected somewhere that the city itself can't see. So today's episode is really gonna be focused on terraforming. I'm super excited to see what we can do here. As you guys can see, there is nothing out here right now. I have a bunch of stone in my inventory and I wanna use that to kind of get a general outline of what everything's gonna be looking like. However, however, before we get into that for today, I got a question for you all. Recently, about a week ago now, Wells Knight put out a video talking about how he wanted to go all in in his Minecraft Kingdom series. His vanilla survival series, he wants to go all in in that series, whether that includes adding in custom textures and connected textures and the works and just making it look so much more interesting than it was before, trying to break it away from his Hermitcraft series because he felt like everything was very same samey in there. This got me thinking about doing that for my own series here and mostly bringing in new textures, more customized thing outside of what just we have available here in Minecraft. For example, these flowers used to be the Allium, I believe. Yes, the Allium. So we've changed that guy, totally different than what those little popsicle stick flowers were before. Beyond that, an idea that comes into mind would be changing all of our paintings, not all the paintings, but a lot of our paintings out to be things that would be more useful. Maybe we have like some pots and pans hanging on a rack that we could use inside of a kitchen. Maybe we have a sheet of paper that would be looking like a bunch of notices on a notice board or maybe we have small ones, big ones, just different sizes of it, those types of things. Then we have some different types of, maybe we'll have like a shield emblem or something like that on, the on one of our small ones. Maybe we do some flags or things. I'm taking a lot of inspiration for what Conquest uses in their paintings. However, that all being said, I'm really curious to hear what you guys got to say about that. What do you guys think about adding that type of stuff into our texture pack here, making things a lot more interesting in our world in general? I think it could be kind of a fun change to be able to mix things up, but I want to, of course, get your guys' feedback on this. And so let me know down in the comments below what you guys think we should be adding, if anything, for those types of things. Do you guys like that idea? Should we go for it and do that? Customize our texture pack out a little bit more than what it currently is so we can just have kind of a more lifelike, alive environment. I've been, as I've mentioned multiple times now, I've been watching a lot of the Conquest uh, survival series going on, mostly Dukon Red One stuff, bringing back the Duconia crew. Um, and it's just been so cool seeing everything that they've been doing over there, which is those custom textures that are in Conquest available through all the different mod stuff that they do in that. And I think it could really help bring a lot of ideas and life into this series itself. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys want to be seeing for that. Should we do it? Should we not do it? Let me know. I'm super curious. I'm going to go ahead though. And as I've been kind of starting here, work with some way of getting a blueprint to get our grass up there or get our cliff face up there, kind of getting a rounded out circle of this. And I'll be back to you guys and we can go ahead and tackle this a little bit further. All right, everybody, welcome on back. So I got a little bit of an update here for you guys coming over into this dirt filled area right here. I think it's looking pretty great so far. So we'll go ahead and take a walk down to the very corner of it, jump on down here and take a look from the other side. So you can see here that we got base, our basic stone cliff built up throughout here. I want to bring some coarse dirt and things like that in along the edge here as well, similar to what we did up in the Nordic area with our big custom mountain range. How all those cliffs are working, I kind of want to repeat that here, maybe without as many leaves on this. But anyways, you can see that our cliff face itself is coming in very, very quickly. It's coming back very fast. I'm going to bring in some cobblestone slabs and stairs and things to smooth this out a little bit more. 
But man, I can't wait for 1.14 to actually make this look really, really good. So I want to do that as a little tester plot right there to figure out what I want to be doing with this. I think I got a pretty good idea in mind of how I want to be taking this thing throughout. Uh, we're going to have this bit coming out here, stretching out a little bit into the water. Then we'll have that kind of keep going back and forth there. So that'll be our first loop and little area that you can come in through there. You see that's going to be going back. We got a lot of mobs up in here. So that's going to be kind of through there. It's going to be even farther back there. Coming pretty far forward and throughout here. I smoothed this area out just to give us a little bit of a space to work with. You can quickly kill off these zombie guys. And yeah, so that's going to be going forward. That's going to be really far back there. This one's going to be really far forward. This is going to be kind of our, our deepest point in here. Because basically that's going to come down and then the water is going to come in behind that. Creating a little bit of a U shape. And then coming out over to this side. I haven't done much more than bring decide I want to bring this out a little bit more over here. We'll figure that out as we go throughout this. But I am thinking this is a perfect opportunity to bring back the good old fashioned time lapse. So let's go ahead and kick this off into time lapse mode. I'm going to give myself one hour to see how much stuff I can possibly get done bringing our cliff faces all the way from here over to there through the good old fashioned time lapse mode. So I'll see you guys on the other side of this here time lapse. Thank you. 
All right, everybody, welcome on back. So that was a pretty crazy time lapse right there. If I gotta say that, I think that's probably one of the bigger time lapses we have done for quite a while now, excluding building just the gold farm itself through time lapse form. But this place in here is looking pretty freaking insane. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. That was super fun to make. Had a lot of fun doing that and kind of building everything up here. I'm throwing some torches down here though, just so that for now it's a little bit more mob proof and safe in here while we're working through everything just because it was a little painful. If you guys saw a few times, I used creepers to help excavate the area around here and I think it worked out pretty well. But these are all the inner chambers in here. You didn't really get a great look at them throughout the time lapse. I do still need to come in through here and bring that stone all the way down to the base. But there's going to be a lot more underwater terraforming and things like that going on throughout here. However, back on this side, I did come over and bring this all the way to the back there at the end of the time lapse, which I'm super pumped with how this area turned out. I really wasn't expecting to do this part of it in the time lapse. I mostly just want to get a little block right up there to add a little bit of variation to that because right there is looking like just a point. You can see on that side, they were the same. It really bugged me. <laughs> But anyways, this point right here I left raised up because I actually want to go ahead and create a little bit of a tunnel. Maybe right through there. Maybe we have it hidden back here of some way that would get us up into the castle itself so that we can have some way to get like have a dock area down here. I want to have like a wizardy dock area right down in here so we can have that type of stuff going throughout here. I love these little sandy beaches in right here. I think we can go ahead and keep these guys. Maybe work with them a little bit more to make it a little bit better looking overall instead of just being kind of as is right now. Then coming around this corner, we can go ahead and just fix that stuff. Uh, coming through this open point right back in here, I want to go ahead and kind of keep hollowing this cave out here, making it go a little bit further back. Probably open it up a little bit more into this guy and then have a smaller area in here that's kind of just these pools a little bit more than what we're seeing on the outside. So it just looks a little bit more full and a little bit more caved out, a lot more water in here, bringing that fantasy vibe in a little bit more than what we have currently, because right now it does have that really strong fantasy vibe to it. But overall, it's more just looking like some cliffs. I wanna make it look like it's really going deep in there and that the castle's actually sitting on top of it. Maybe the wizards have some magic spell that's keeping them up there. So we wanna go ahead and keep that going pretty strong. Outside of this, however, I do want to go ahead and grab a few things of coarse dirt, which we should have some around here. Uh, two stacks will be okay. We don't need that much of it. And then we can come right up to the top point right in there. Go ahead and check this guy out with you guys here and give you a big heads up on what's going on up here. If we can even get up across our little amazing bridge right here. All right. So coming up into this area, we can go ahead and just grab a little bit of coarse dirt and walk and do this as we go. I just want to go ahead and add a little bit more variation and shape and scale, or not scale, just just difference in shapes and colors and things to help break up the edge here so it doesn't just look so same same -y using only our grass blocks throughout. I think that'll really help break this up. I've been playing with the idea of adding in some extra textures down below instead of just the stone. And I had a thought of turning all of this into granite. I feel like that could look so cool. All of this being like that kind of a red undertone, I feel like that could be a really, really cool feeling down here. Also, I think I finally like the granite texture in Minecraft, so I'm excited to use it. The polished granite's, granite's okay, but the granite itself, which we're using like down here on the roads and things like that. Um, where are we looking at this guy? That one. I think this guy right here is actually a pretty good texture and it'd be really fun if we were in 1.14 already because it has the slabs and stairs and everything. So that would be really fun to work with. But maybe we'll have to come back and do all the texture variation and stuff like that later on because I don't think I really want to tear all this down and rebuild it. I know it's not really doing the shape and everything that again, but we just finished this. It's too fresh in the brain and I don't want to go back in there and deal with all that right now, to be honest. Uh, I had a lot of fun building this one up though. We do have a few more things to kind of touch on and just do in this area while we're here. I'm going to try and get that dock area established a little bit better so that it looks a little bit cleaner and better and kind of more finished off. We're not going to be building the caves yet because I don't know where they would link up to and connect to within the castle itself because I'd like to be able to plan the walkways and the rooms within the castle. We might not do the interiors, but I at least want to have it more set up than our other castle because looking back at Bleak Rock, I love the thing. But if you look at the interior anywhere on any of the things minus the feast hall, it's just empty. There's not even floors in for the different levels. So I think I want to go ahead and kind of take ourselves up an extra level beyond that here and try and make this look a little bit better. I do want to come back in on this edge right up here and add a bunch of life and vegetation and things like that. But we're not going to do that today 
just because I feel like that would make the build look a little weird without having the castle in here. Because I, I love having, like we did with the trees on the front side over there, I love having the trees actually come up along the edge of the castle walls itself. So I really want to be able to add that in. And then we got to figure out what we're doing for the tech for the terraforming along the back end here. If we're just going to kind of have a sharp cliff going along there. I don't want to do these whole like sea cliffs where there's big caves and things like that with water flowing into it along the back end. Because I think that would look pretty bad, uh, especially because that's a little lake there. It's not big waves crashing against everything. So that's pretty much where we're at for now. Overall, super, super happy with this guy. We can go ahead and take a look at this from the sky here. And that's looking awesome with a castle on top of this soon. Man, <laughs> I'm very happy with this one. Taking a look over here from the city itself, it's looking really cool as well. You can see that whole just fantasy vibe to it, which can just fill in that little area down there. Maybe get that sandbar looking a little bit better right in there. I think it's going to look super sweet. Anyways, though, I'm going to go ahead and come up with a little simple dock design over there, and I'll be back with you guys after I do that stuff, add in that thing. And I think, honestly, that'll be time to finish this episode off because that time lapse took me a long time. I haven't edited it quite up yet, but that was probably like an hour and a half, two hours of work. And that was, it was a lot, guys. Uh, so I'm pretty burnt out, and I'm running out of time to get some videos done. So we're I'll go ahead and do that stuff. I'll be back with you guys soon, and we can go ahead and end this guy out. Brief break before we actually get around to finishing this video out. I decided that I wanted to go ahead and replace the torches with another form of light that we could use that maybe might look a little bit better. And I completely forgot sea pickles were a thing in this game. I always forget about coral, dead coral, sea pickles, and all that stuff. Like, we used the full coral blocks a few times in our actual city itself to build some stuff up here, but I totally forgot about the rest of this stuff. So we're going to be bringing in some of this guy in there to make things look a little bit nicer. That being said, though, too, I brought all the buckets with me, and I filled all of them up with fishies. So we need some names for fish. So let me know down in the comments below what you think we should be naming these fishy guys. All right, everybody, welcome on back to the castle. We are back. All of the sea pickles are now in place. The fishies are out in the water. They are swimming free over on that side of the dock. I decided to go ahead and add them in with the other fishies we got over there. And man, this area here with the shaders on is looking pretty freaking fantastic. I'm really, really happy with all the work that we got done today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as well. There's obviously a few little parts that we can come in here and fix and modify and change up. But look at all these sea pickles glowing throughout this area. We do need to fix up little things like that. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done under here to make this look super sweet. But I love the darkened shadows and everything that are being cast on this area. I just think that adds such a great atmosphere to here. I know the shaders are making so you guys can't really see all the intricate little details. And now we're in that weird half floating half thing because our light is out. Uh, there we go. Elytra is no longer out. <laughs> but yeah, this area was so much fun to build up. That was super fun to work on, and I can't wait to come back in here and try and do some more. We'll add in a small little boat guy right in here. We might even add in another something or another kind of floating in this area. We'll see what we do when we get around to it. Should we be adding in any coral and things like that to this area? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm curious if we should be adding in some coral as well. However, let's go ahead and pull, sit on our little rock right here and pull our comment question of the day out. This is a short one coming in from Demananat Not Demananat Not. Uh, he's saying you could use purple blocks for the roof. It gives it a bit of texture and makes it look nice and colorful. This kind of goes off of what we were talking about earlier in today's episode of how I want to start actually changing some textures and want to get your guys' opinion on that. I'm thinking about making our purple color instead of that gross kind of vibrant texture color that we have right now. That's just in our in. Uh, in our game by default in Minecraft by default. I really don't like that one too much I did hollow this area out here a bunch more as well guys uh, But I really don't like it. I think it's way too vibrant and way too kind of gross So I'm thinking about retexturing the purple to be more of a dark purple so like a darker purple um, So let me know in the comments what you guys think about that because if we do that I would love to use that as the roof block up here like adding that into these areas Want to be able to get those slabs and stairs and everything like that, but I think that could really fit our series better and make it that being a block that we could actually use throughout the world. Because right now I feel like purple is something that I can't use. So the goal with that stuff I was talking about at the beginning of the episode is making every block in our world right now something that we can actually use, but also something that would have multiple uses. That's a very, very important part for me is that we want to make sure everything that we have in here actually is something that we can use in multiple areas. It's not like we make a sp very specific version of a block so that we can 
do this one unique thing with it and call it good there. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Please hit that like button if you did. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. And I will catch you on the flip side.